Hey everyone. Oh my God, this is so weird. This is my first time going la live and I am so nervous. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I can already see some of you guys have been waiting. This is very, I'm very, very nervous. I did not think that I am going to be this nervous. I was going to be this nervous. I can't even get my words out. That's hard even when it's recorded. So get ready for a lot of kind of like, you know, not the right stuff coming out. So I'm super excited about today. I just want to know that you guys can hear me okay and everything. Let me know because I'm kind of like reading your messages. And I just want to know that the sound is all okay. Everything's all okay so that we're ready to go. Otherwise I can get my tech husband in to sort this out. Are we all good? Yeah, we're all good. Amazing. Guys, I've been nervous nervous because I feel like this is like my chance to actually meet you guys because I always see your comments and now I feel like we're actually meeting. I just wish I could actually see you guys the way you guys can see me. But anyway, we're going to go with this. Let's get started. I've got a very, very special kind of like tutorial plan for you today. You're going to get ready with me. And it's actually the evening here, by the way, guys. <laughs> so we are going to be changing the timing going forward. It's still going to be perfect for you guys but it's just going to be a bit kind of like works for both of us because this Sunday we're going to be doing evening. Like I'm literally going to be taking my makeup off after. So I have my chamomile tea ready so that when I'm done, I can take my makeup off, have another shower and just get straight into bed. But this is all for you guys. So we're going to get started with skincare. I don't have anything on at the moment. First thing I'm going to do is put my Rode Barrier Restore Cream and I'm really excited about the end because at the end, I'm going to be answering some of your questions, all these questions that you guys are sending through, like throughout any questions that you have, send them through. I'm just going to kind of like scroll, scroll. There you go. First mistake there. I'm going to scroll through and answer some of your questions. Why is this so nerve wracking? I mean, I knew I wouldn't have a problem talking. I have no problem with that. But it's just kind of like, you know, it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm live. It's crazy. It's weird because I have not had this level of kind of nerve since the first, like my first couple of videos went out. Whew, but we're all good. Okay. So what I want to do is get started with my eye cream, which I'm using my drunk elephant. Still on this, guys. I'm <laughs> still on this eye cream. It's just never ending, literally. Okay. So excited for you guys to watch this. I'm reading some of your comments. Oh my God, it's so exciting to see you guys here. I recognize some of the names because some of you guys are members on my online publication called the Beauty Breakfast Club. And I see you guys, you know, leaving comments there as well. And I respond to you guys over there as well. And yeah, it's just really exciting. So, okay, I'm using some new makeup today. Super, super excited about this because this specific makeup I tried over this week. I've only tried it on one other day during the week. And I was kind of mind blown by it, guys. Very, very mind blown. And I'm going to be telling you what it is that I'm so excited about. So before I put my kind of concealer and everything on, we're going to go in with a primer. I'm using my Hourglass Vanish today. I haven't used this in a while. And I usually use this when I feel like the foundation that I'm going to use is kind of already a little bit kind of, it has that luminosity to it. Because if I'm using a very matte foundation, then I like to use my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip because that is kind of gives me that kind of hydration and that slight luminosity through the foundation. But if I'm using a foundation which already kind of has that kind of luminosity in there, then I kind of want something which is a bit kind of extra, just gonna to help to really refine my pores. So I'm just reading some of your messages. Oh, you guys are so sweet. You guys are like, yeah, you're doing well. I hope, you can, I hope my nerves are like really obvious, right? If someone said, so Linda said, I bought the drunk elephant eye cream and I love it, but I find it can pill sometimes. Oh, I've not had that issue. Oh, God, at least just calm down because I'm just like very, you know, nervous. Okay, 
Right, I'm going to be using a concealer first. I'm going to conceal my eyelids, obviously, first. I'm going to do the whole base first, and then we're going to move to the eyes, which I'm really excited about as well. So I'm using a new concealer. This is new. This is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. Now, my shade is 240, and it is, it's a really good concealer, guys. I used this the other day, and it's genuinely, it's kind of like, the, the best way that I can describe it is, They've named it correctly. Like when they've said awakening concealer, this is amazing for dull, tired skin, by the way. So, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and conceal my eyelids. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm hoping that I've got everything ready here because I don't wanna have to get out of my seat or anything, but I think I have everything here. I'm sure, you know, the lives are gonna get better and better as we go along because I will learn along the way if there's any kind of specific kind of thing that I need to incorporate. Okay, so I'm buffing that on the eyelids. I think this is also really good for you guys because, you know, it's not edited. You guys are like going to see everything. So I'm getting my powder. I'm using my new Makeup Forever setting powder, and I've got my powder puff here. Now, you've got to make sure that you set the eyelids very quickly because if I keep blinking up and like blinking and looking around, then basically those creases are going to develop. So what I want to do is before they start developing, I want to press this powder in. There you go. And then we are going to get a brush. You can get any kind of brush. I use the Real Techniques setting brush and just dust it off lightly. Okay. Is this live? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Welcome to the party. It is live. Yeah, everyone's loving the drunk elephant. I mean, I've been using it for like forever. <laughs> it should be good, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is conceal other areas. We're gonna do a little bit of underpainting, but not too heavy because I actually wanna show you this, this foundation, which is, oh my God, it is so good, guys. This foundation, see, I'm a bit stressed about this foundation. Reason being is because it's an expensive brand. So I kind of like didn't wanna love it as much as I do love it, you know? And I was like, this isn't gonna be that good. You know, I'm, I'm getting, I was getting ready to kind of say, too expensive, not worth it. Who would spend that amount on a foundation? But they, the brand got it right. And I'm going to explain all of that shortly. I feel like my hair is really weird. Okay. No, it's fine. Okay. So let's apply some concealer. Actually, no, before we apply the concealer, I want to apply the foundation just to show you what it looks like without any concealer. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to really see it. So Concealer that I'm, I mean, foundation that I'm going to use is the Louboutin foundation, right? This is the fluid foundation. I do not even know how to say the full name. I think it's in French. You know what I'm like, even with basic English. So we're not even going to go, we're not even going to try and pronounce this. So, okay, I'm going to get a little bit of this on the back of my hand, right? Just one pump. We'll see if we need more, but I don't think we will. My shade in this is 35NO, which I'm assuming is neutral olive right? Now I'm going to get my brush that I like buffing this in with and the brush that I'm going to use. There is a brush that came with the foundation, but to be honest, I prefer this one. This is the Sigma F85 brush. You guys know how much I love this. Now I've got the foundation here on the back of my hand and I'm going to just start kind of like buffing it into the brush like this, right? So I'm just kind of like brushing it in brushing it in, brushing it into the brush, you know, you know what I'm doing. Okay. So yeah, checking what you guys are saying. It's really interesting. It's, I love like being able to like read your messages as well at the same time. Okay. So we're going to start buffing this in. Now I'm just going to start on one side. And we're going to slowly work our way around. I just want to, I want you guys to see one side. See how I'm just like swirling it into the skin. 
you've got to make sure that you have a decent amount of skincare on underneath. And even if you don't, I don't mean like pile it all on. What I do mean is like have the right skincare, you know, like for example, if you have dry skin, you want to make sure you have a rich, nice moisturizer so that you're not kind of like grabbing hold of any dry skin. And if you have quite oily skin, you want to make sure you go for a very light lotion. Can you see that? Guys, can you see that? Like, how good is this foundation? That's just the smallest amount. Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is unreal, this foundation. It's so, so good. So, what are you guys thinking so far, right? It's really nice, don't you think? Foundation name. <laughs> so I was like, please repeat. I never said it in the first place. <laughs> it's it's so, honestly, I'm not good at pronouncing stuff. It is, okay, let me, do I even want to attempt this? Okay, what is it? It says it over there on the thing. Oh my God, I'm so bad. I really do not mean to disrespect the language, but I cannot. Honestly, I'm just so bad at pronouncing things. All I'm going to say is it's the Lubutum Fluid Foundation. Taint fetish. Yeah, gosh. That was horrendous. Okay. Anyway, it's so nice, right? Okay. How much? Guys, I'm really sorry to break it to you. I don't even know if I could actually bring myself to spend this much on a foundation. It's crazy. But all I'm saying is they sent it to me and I just feel like I should put it out there and show you guys what it's like. Because obviously, when it's an expensive brand, you know, the tough thing is with foundations is you can't really go out and try it properly, right? And like, how many Louboutin stores are there, realistically, just out and about? You know, it's not like a Sephora, is it? So, you know, I want to be able to show you guys in case any of you do want to go out and buy it. I mean, that foundation is great. It's so, so good. But from what I saw on their website, it's $77. Don't kill the messenger. <laughs> I'm only the messenger. It is ridiculous, right? But it is amazing. I just wanted to share this with you because it's it's pretty insane. And it is a much bigger bottle than this. This is a tester, by the way, because they sent me a whole load of shades. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of like share that with you. And by the way, I've kept this on all day. And it it's so good. So let me let me tell you this. It's called, it's basically what they say is that it's a luminous matte foundation. How do you put luminous and matte in the same sentence? I don't understand that either, but I'm telling you this is a luminous matte foundation. I didn't know it could, that would be the case. But the best way for me to describe it to you, which you'll see anyway when I finish this, but I mean, look at that. That's crazy, right? That's all you need. For a day-to-day -day thing, that's all you need, right? But basically, at the end of the day, when I had it on, it was it stayed matte, so it wasn't greasy, it wasn't too glowy, it wasn't, like, shiny at all, it stayed matte. But it had this bizarre kind of, like, bizarre but amazing, lit from within glow, and that's where the luminosity comes in. Okay. Oh, I feel like I'm slowly settling down. I'm slowly, you know, relaxing a bit. Let me just have a sip of this. Okay, maybe that's going to calm me down, the chamomile tea. I think it's all the talking as well, because I've got no one speaking back at me, so I'm, like, constantly talking. I'm just not going to want to speak to anyone after, after this. Okay, so we put the foundation on. We might apply a little bit more after, because we're going for a nice, like, kind of glam eye. I've got my concealer here. Again, this is my Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. And my shade, again, I'm going to keep repeating this as I go along. It's 240. Okay, so let's apply this here. So I'm going to explain to you where I've applied it and why. Now, I am going to apply a little bit extra concealer than what I probably do usually. And I'm going to explain why in a sec because we are doing more of an evening glam look. Oh, okay. There you go. I don't think we want anywhere, any, anything anywhere else. Okay, so 
where's my brush? Okay. So I've got my Hollywood complexion brush here by Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm going to get the large side and I'm going to start buffing in these areas first. No, that I'm going to leave. Sorry. This area here. So I'm going to keep it where it is. But I'm just taking it up here because this is going to help to kind of like lift the area too. Because I feel like I have like these slight depression lines here. So I feel like this helps to kind of like lift the area. So it's good for anyone who has that issue or darkness around that issue. Oh, someone's like, it looks totally amazing to me, worth every penny. It is amazing, actually. It is, it is like so, so good. I love reading your messages, guys. You guys are so cool. By the way, I just want to say that I absolutely love you guys. Like, you know, you guys have been so supportive. Okay, let's start blending this in. I've got my beauty blender. Okay, I'm going to start buffing this in. Now, can you see I'm just like literally going like that, right? So I'm not moving it around. I'm not like swirling the brush. I'm literally just pressing, lifting, lifting, pressing, lifting very quickly. And I'm keeping it in that same area. You don't need to spread it out anywhere else. There. Go straight ahead to the other side. Now, I want to apply a little bit of foundation over this because as you guys know, I like to underpaint, so I like to kind of seal it with a bit of foundation so it doesn't look so disconnected from the rest of the face. But before I do that, I do want to just apply a little bit of a darker shade to sculpt a little bit. Okay, just breathe, boo. You're, you're good. I'm trying. Who's that? That's Roz. I'm trying. I'm trying. But I think it's all the kind of talking. Okay. I still can't get over the fact that I'm, I'm live. Like, I feel like this is so bizarre. Okay. So I've sculpted the sides of my face there. And I'm going to go here. I've got this thing, by the way, guys. Now that you're live, I'm going to have to show it with you. I have, like, um, when I get nervous, I laugh a lot. <laughs> I've got a really, a really bad habit. When I get nervous, I laugh so much. I'm that person that laughs at the wrong time. Like, if there's something serious going on, it's just, it's not because I find it funny. I'm just, it's the nerves. I laugh at the wrong time. Or once I start, I just can't stop. And it's at nothing. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But yeah, I'm just letting you know. So, okay. You can see where we've done this. And you can see we started from the top of the ear, right? So it starts kind of like just at the top of the ear. And then we go down and it kind of ends around here. You don't want to go too far in because we really want to focus on keeping this middle bit kind of more kind of brighter. And the, the, the kind of structure that we're creating and the dimension should really be more on the perimeter of the face here, right? So this bit should kind of be kept clean. The only thing we're gonna be doing on this section is actually the nose and that's it, which we'll do afterwards. Because I really just wanna do it step by step. So uh, let me get my other brush. So this is another Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush. And okay, so I'm just reading your messages at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna buff this in. Now, can you see again, same kind of method. I'm pressing it in. I'm not going like that. See, see that really soft effect there that we've got? If you want to make it darker because you want some real kind of definition, you can add more. Like, let me show you so that you see what I mean. Add it a little bit more. And it will just, all it will do, as long as you stick to the same area and you stick to the same method of blending, which is like that you will see that it just gives you more of that kind of depth there. See what I mean? Look at the shape it gives you. It's crazy, right? Okay, let's go this side. We'll add a little bit more on this side too so that it kind of matches the other side and it's symmetrical. Do you dampen? So Miss Hazel says, do you dampen the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush at all when you're buffing the forehead, mouth, chin, highlight. No, I don't, I use it dry. Because I feel like all you're doing is changing the kind of fluidity otherwise. So I wanna really keep the original texture of the concealer. So I keep it dry. 
You don't really need to wet the brush. You don't really need to wet any brush, to be honest. Okay, there we go. We've got cheekbones, guys. We have cheekbones. Let's do this bit now. I really am focusing on doing this area a lot recently because I just feel like, because I'm like, me and my husband are doing like a whole body, is it called body recomposition with the PT? And he's got us on a surplus at the moment. So I just feel like a bit kind of like bloated at the moment, just because we're, we're like, on higher calories, I can't wait till next month because we're on a cut. So that's done, right? <laughs> yeah, Lynette's like, it's funny how you're freaked out going live. I don't know why, it's so weird. I don't know why, I have no idea. Okay, yeah, honestly, I'm. it's quite clear I'm freaked out, but <laughs> anyway. Okay, we're gonna go to the nose now. So this is where I like to contour the nose, with my concealer, and I do a little V here. I am sorry, guys. Each to their own, but I love a little button nose. I love it on me, right? So I'm gonna do a little V there. That helps to just make the tip of my nose smaller. And then I'm gonna do a line on either side of the bridge of the nose. And there you go. Ooh, okay, deep, deep breaths, deep breaths. Okay, right, let's get my brush back. Where is it? My Charlotte Tilbury one. I'm using the smaller side of the brush. Okay, there you go. We're gonna keep this in the same area. So again, same way, you can take off the excess on your hand. You know, if you don't wanna kind of like smudge all of this in, if you feel like you've got a bit too much. We're gonna keep all of these shapes in the same area, but we're just kind of buffing it in. Now, the sides of the bridge of the nose, you can bring down a little bit, but not too far down. Okay, and there you go. See what I mean? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, because don't forget, we're gonna go over a little bit of foundation. Right, let's get the sponge. And right, now I'm taking that foundation. I'm taking a little bit of like, like that. I'm swiping a bit to the side. I'm buffing it into the sponge before I buff it into my face. That's very important. If you guys want a really, really nice flawless finish, you've got to make sure that you buff the product into the sponge before you buff it into your face. If you just go in with a whole load of product and go into your face, Firstly, it's gonna be harder for you to blend in. Secondly, you're not gonna get a seamless finish, which is even. And thirdly, you're gonna find you'll probably end up using more product. So what you wanna do is really kind of get it into the sponge before you get it onto the face. And that way you're just applying a very even amount initially. You're not gonna going in with a whole load of product, got a dollop on your skin and then trying to blend it all in. So what we're gonna do now is we're not gonna apply this everywhere because I don't need to apply foundation everywhere because we did put like a, a kind of thin layer, we buffed it into the face, but I am gonna do it, you know, on the under eyes and just kind of like around this nose area. There you go. One thing I will say about this foundation, that's all you need there, by the way. So buff it into the sponge, is it does have a slight kind of like fragrance to it which doesn't smell natural. That's the only thing. It doesn't smell after you put it on your face, but when you first put it on, you can smell it, right? And it really depends on whether that's an issue for you or not. Personally, if this is the finish I'm getting, I really don't care. But, you know, just in case you guys are concerned about that, let's take it down here, because we wanna make sure we don't have a mask-like effect. Okay, I'm kind of done with that. I'm happy with that now. So what I want to do now is set this. So I'm going to get some of this powder. Oh, I hope I don't start sneezing. I'm going to get some of this powder into the lid from my Makeup Forever. And I want to get my powder puff ready. This is how we're going to set this foundation, right? I can feel a hair. Oh, dear. I can feel a hair. Oh, it's gone. Oh, no. It's my hair. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. 
let's read your couple of comments. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take away any kind of lines that are under my eyes. So I'm just pressing in and then flicking up. That way you're not disturbing whatever's underneath, right? Now I've done that and before I make any more facial expressions, I'm gonna go straight into this powder here. And this is why I'm not super zoomed in guys, because I really wanted to show you how I'm doing things. So I'm gonna press into that. And then I'm gonna press here, right? Always do the under eyes first because you've got rid of the creases. Right, then whatever's left on this sponge, I'm gonna take it around other areas. Ultimately, if you want your foundation to last literally all day and night, this is the way that it's gonna work. But what that also means, and this is an important point, guys, what that also means is that for the first like hour or so, depending on your skin type, your skin will look extra kind of matte, right? It takes, very important point here, guys, so important, please understand this. It takes roughly around, again, depending on your skin type, around 45 minutes to an hour and a half for your natural oils in your skin to come out, right? And when they do, that is when your face won't look so freshly kind of done and matte. So don't be scared if initially when you first do it, it's quite kind of like very matte, more matte than you'd probably like it. This is the real techniques rush. I'm just dusting this powder off. Now, if you have quite dry skin, I've got something in my eye here. That was horrible. Um, if you have quite dry skin, then obviously I wouldn't suggest pressing it in as much as what I have done because you probably don't have as much, you know, of your natural oils coming through. But if you have combination oily skin, this is going to be like working, like this is going to work wonders. It's going to be magic for you in terms of like having your makeup last all day. Now that's our kind of base done really. So now what we're going to do is do the brow so that I look, you know, a little bit human and... Let me just wipe off whatever product I have on my brows. I like to make sure they're nice and clean before I actually start them. Otherwise, it's just a buildup of kind of concealer and foundation on there. Okay. Not that I have loads of hair there, but, you know, let me just take off whatever's on the back of my hand. Okay. How are we, going? How, how are we doing so far, guys? We're doing all right? Let me have a little bit of my chamomile tea. Okay, is it still the light banana so, who said that? It's corrective banana. So this is a new powder, guys, by Makeup Forever. It's a new powder. It's an updated version, I believe. I'm, I'm not too sure if they'll be kind of like discontinuing that original one that I like, but this is called 0 0.4 corrective banana. It's not any more yellow than the other one, to be honest, so it's actually okay. Um, loving the makeup so far, Nina. That's by Ikra Ali. Thank you so much. Do you use mineral powder? No, I'm going to be honest, Alexa. Alexa, you are you you follow me on you subscribe to my um, the Beauty Breakfast Club, I think. Um, yeah. So I don't use mineral powder because what is going on with my baby hairs? They're really annoying me. Anyway, um, <laughs> they're ready for bed. I, so I don't use mineral powder because I just feel like it just doesn't give, mineral powder just isn't gonna like, kind of like, it's not gonna hold your makeup in as well. It's unfortunate because mineral powder is so much better for your skin, but unfortunately it's just not gonna hold your makeup in place. Not anything that I've tried anyway. Okay. So I must put, what is the purpose of dampening a beauty blender? I always use a damp beauty blender. You can use the dry one if you want. It's really personal preference. But if you were to use a damp beauty blender, foundation isn't going to be so, you know, like so much product on your face. It's it's kind of not going to be as cakey. It's not going to be as full coverage. So if you want to kind of give more of a 
slightly natural finish to your foundation, then dampen the beauty blender. But always make sure you squeeze all the excess out, wrap it with a tissue, squeeze it again so it grabs hold of all the excess. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh, hi, Bertha from Mexico. Hola. Is that how you say it? That's the one thing that I've said right, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love Mexico, by the way. Oh, my God. I can't wait to go back there. I went there very many, many, many years ago, and I can't – I really want to go again. Um, okay. Brows. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use – let's use this. We'll use the Too Faced – Fluff and brow, laminating brow wax. This stuff is like glue, literally. The only thing is, is it can end up looking a little bit, you know, like dries to a little bit of a white kind of finish. But I have found that by cleaning my brows first, it helps it. Because I think, you know, if, you, if you're not going to like clean them and after putting concealer and foundation on, then you're really going to get that kind of dry look to this product but I find that this helps oh god I really have horrendous brows literally they just don't grow back anywhere <laughs> like that is genuinely the situation okay so okay right what am I using okay I'm using my Lime Crime Bushy Brow Pen, love this stuff. I'm going to let that just dry for a minute because it's. I can feel it needs to dry before I go in with the product. So in the meantime, let me just sculpt my nose. So I'm going to get my Fenty 200 brush, my Fenty Beauty Sunstalker in Shady Biz. And I literally just, look how much I've used this bronzer, it's so good. Apply it on the tip of the brush, blot it on the back of my hand once, and then I kind of go over this little tip just to enhance it. So exactly what I did before, but not a lot. If I didn't do it underneath, I would have to do it a lot more with this product. And I don't like to apply so much product later on. I'd rather have it all kind of like, you know, within my underpainting. And I just go on the side here. And my nose goes a little bit to one side, I've noticed. And it's because I had a car accident when I was younger. My nose hit the steering wheel. So ever since it's been a bit to one side, it's probably not something anyone else could notice. Now, right here, I like to cut this off so that I have that kind of little button nose because I like it. There you go. I'm happy with that. And then I go a little bit on these nostrils there. That's it. Okay, so that's my nose done. I think these brows are dry now. Yeah. Okay, let's go in with the Bushy Brow Pen from Lime Crime. Now, I like to apply this near the front, and let's just hope we have a good brow day today, because sometimes it can be a bit, you know, like, you stress, brows can be very stressful, you know? Um, okay, so I'm just, I've noticed when I do this, I hunch, and it's really annoying. So, I'm going to try and keep my back straight. So basically what I'm doing is just at the front, I'm replicating the hairs, but I'm applying it more along the underside of the brow because I don't want my brows to be kind of like, I don't want to apply it at the top section because I feel like they're high enough as it is. If anything, I'm trying to kind of like lower them a bit. I have so much space underneath, that's where I want to kind of like apply the product. And I kind of like go along really, I'll probably apply a little bit more in a bit. But I just do this front section. See how much that looks better now? So see what I mean? I've applied it at the bottom and it thickens it that way. I don't need to apply it at the top because I've my brows are quite kind of like high there. Okay, so someone said, Veronica said, I have to bake my brows so oily. I totally get it. And if, if you need to do that, then that's great. But what I would suggest is bake them and then use a wet wipe, wrap it around your finger and just go lightly over the hair so that you're taking the powder off the actual hair, right? That should help. It's a bit of a process, but, you know, it helped. I don't know what I was doing there. I was like this. <laughs> okay, so same thing here. I'm going to just apply 
it on the underside of my brow I want to make sure it's nice and symmetrical so we need to go a little bit lower here and make sure let's see I've got a little bit too low on one side so what I do when I have made a bit of a mistake like that or I feel like it's not even I've got this real bad habit of wanting everything to be symmetrical and no one's really symmetrical so I don't know what my situation is there but you know I think it's just being a makeup artist you just get a bit it gets a bit obsessive I think so okay we're gonna carry on now uh, okay yeah I'm happy with that so gonna add a few more there right I think that's a kind that's kind of it right okay that's enough there we'll go back if we need to right so, okay, <clears throat> sending love from Tampa, Florida. So nice seeing you live from Kate the Great. Oh, thanks, Kate. It's so nice being live. It's like so nice actually reading your messages like live, <laughs> live. So I'm using the Benefit precisely my brow pencil I've got that thing again where I'm getting nervous and I'm like laughing I'm using the the benefit precisely my brow pencil in 3.5 so now I feel like yeah I just don't have symmetrical brows I guess this one's a bit higher that's because it naturally goes higher it's a bit annoying um but I'll show you what I do there to counteract that so okay what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start on the underside and start basically kind of shaping it with my pencil and this is where I can't really draw in the hairs because obviously there are areas that I need to kind of like really fill in that don't have any hair but I'm really aimed at kind of like shaping the brow here okay and There you go. That's a good brow, I think. I'm happy with that. But I do feel that because I have such kind of sparse brows underneath, that sometimes a pencil alone isn't enough to kind of really sort that area out and make it look kind of like there is hair there. So I'm going to show you something I do which I think kind of like finishes off my brow. So let me do this as well on this side. Okay. I think we are nearly done with this. Let me just make sure that we are kind of like symmetrical or as symmetrical as we can be. See, this, uh, this brow here is always a struggle for me because it's just so oddly shaped. It's just such a bizarre brow. Anyway, <laughs> it really is. Right, as I said to you, this brow is a bit higher than the other brow. So what I do is got a little bit of concealer on the back of my hand, got like a lip brush. And what I do is I just kind of like go over, shape it from the top so it doesn't look so see that's brought it down already that's what i do there okay last thing i'm going to do for my brows and this really kind of finishes it off for me is i get my anastasia brow pen this is in the shade chocolate and i basically let me grab a tissue in case i need it i basically replicate the hairs not right from the beginning though. I kind of do it along the main brow. There you go. 
All I need is a bit of darkness there. And it kind of like basically finishes my brow off, right? Okay. Perfect. Let's do this side. Oh, I need a little bit more there. That's a bit better. Okay, I'm kind of like happy with that. I feel like I could very easily just sit here and just do my brows all evening, I'll be honest. But, you know, I think there, there are many people that do that. Let me know if you guys do that. Do you guys end up spending so long on your brows? Like, it's ridiculous, right? Like, do you sometimes just start doing it and then you're like, I don't know what's going on here. They just <laughs> It's like the whole kind of like eyeliner thing, right? I'm just going to go back in and shape this a bit more. Like, am I the only one who ends up spending so long on brows? Or does anyone else do that? I don't know. I just feel like... It can be an all night thing for me. Let's see. Oh, someone put, oh, Kate the Great said, kind of funny story, but I recently burned a piece of my eyebrow off. Long story, lol. So this eyebrow tutorial is really helping me out right now. I'm so glad. I mean, I didn't burn my eyebrow off, but you know, I might as well have <laughs> on certain areas. So I'm glad it's helping. Someone else has said, uh, Veronica said they just get bigger when I do that. <laughs> yeah, that can happen too. It's happened to me. Uh, they came out great. Neen said, thanks. Eyebrow, someone said, Erin said, eyebrows are intimidating. I don't do anything because I'm afraid I'll look like a red angry bird. <laughs> yeah, they can be. I mean, there are there have been days, to be honest, where I've done them and it's like, what? what was happening there <laughs> so anyway let's get started with the exciting bit now what I want to do is I want to do start on my eyes and this is this is the bit that I've been looking forward to firstly can we see how well that foundation is settling in right such a nice foundation for those of you who have just joined recently it is the Louboutin, 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 whatever you want to call it. I can never say it right. I'm really bad at pronouncing things. Um, it's a fluid foundation, the new one, and it's absolutely amazing. Ask these guys. Seriously, the ones who have been here right from the beginning of this live, they watched it transform my skin. It's so good. You're going to love it. So now what we're going to be using is something that I've been really excited to use. The Beauty Bay Smoky Palette. I saw this and I was like, wow, this looks so good. So I'm really, really excited about doing this. How amazing does this look, right? Look at that palette. It's such a pretty palette. And do you know what? Beauty Bay have the most amazing eyeshadow palettes. Like, honestly, they're so, so good. So I'm really excited about using this. And I kind of like did think to myself, what am I actually gonna, oh my God, I've got like, I don't know where that's come from, but like clearly must've been when I actually put it on my hand, but a whole load of foundation on my phone. <laughs> I knew something like this was gonna happen. Okay, so I, I was kind of like thinking, what do I kind of do in terms of this look, right? I don't wanna do like a standard kind of like smoky eye. I do wanna kind of like do something that, you guys can actually recreate as well. Penny's like, oh no, I'm late. Don't worry, you did miss the foundation bit, which was like pretty iconic, to be honest. But there's still so much that we're doing here, so don't worry. What do you, someone's put, Julie said, what do you think of microblading? Okay, I had it done and uh, I didn't like it. Now I have nano blading, which is a lot finer, and I do like that. It's a bit of a process though when you first get it done because you can't basically kind of like sweat for 10 days. And it's like, what do who do you think I am? Like, I'm not gonna sweat. Like, you literally can't do anything. You can't even wash your brow. Like, you, when you wash your face, you have to leave out your brows. Like, how do you even do that, right? It's so ridiculous, but it is good. It is pretty amazing for things like the gym and everything. So 
I think you are going to like it. Nano blading is way better. But you have to go to a very good, good, good technician, not just some random freelancer, because the reason I'm saying that is because if it's not done right, it can change the shape and like turn another color and actually spread. And you don't want that. So, okay, oh, let's get started with this. Right, I'm thinking I want to go. Tell me, guys, because you guys are live. So, like, tell me, what do you want me? What kind of colors do you want me to go for? Because there's so many different colors in here. I want to make the most of this live. So, I want to see, just write the, the word, the color. Do you want the blues, blacks, or silver? Tell me what you want. What do you want? I just want to see which kind of color you want to go for because you've got a lot of blues in here like navies you've got a lot of silvers and you've also got more kind of deeper like you've got more towards the black side so i want to know what you guys think i should do okay so i'm definitely going to use some of the shimmer in there okay we're getting them come through black blue silver blacks silver blues blacks oh my god blacks seem to be the ones that are coming through really no one wants to see blues I'll be honest, initially I was going to do the blues. Hold on a minute, more blues are coming through. More blues are coming through. Black, black, black. Does everyone just want black? Black is always done, do navy. That's what I was thinking. Someone's look, I look like a... Oh. <laughs> that was a micro-needling, micro-blading experience. Um, okay, blacks. It looks like it's going to be black. I think it's a close call between blacks and blue. <sighs> how about I do a bit, okay, how about I do a bit of black and blue, right? I'll add a little bit of blue in there. Okay, yeah, let's go. Right, I'm going to get hold of a brush. Let me think how I'm going to do this. I want to... Oh, let me think. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a sheen over the lid first. And I might actually use my finger for this. I just wanna check what these colors are like on the back of my hand first. That's a really nice one, that blue that I just tried. Um, Oh, that top blue one is really good. Okay, I think I'm gonna use that top blue one. That will be my blue. Okay, so I'm using the shade River in this, right? And that is this one here. This one here, right? Now, <laughs> it's that one, guys, it's that one. Okay, so um, I'll probably add a little bit of silver because I feel like everyone wants something different. So I'm going to apply a bit of everything, right? So I'm going to go into that blue. And I'm going to apply this right on the lid, right? And this is what I really want you guys to understand is that applying eye makeup doesn't have to be super complicated, right? Just apply it there. But my main thing is, what I'm making sure is that I'm not going above the crease. And because obviously I've got nails, I don't want to kind of go right close to the, I don't want to cover the whole lid because it's going to be difficult for me to do that because it's just going to go everywhere, right? But it doesn't matter. We can get it right onto the main lid there like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a brush, and this is my Refa 13 brush, and I'm gonna go into that color. I've got something on my nose, it's so annoying. And I'm gonna get a tissue. I'm gonna go into that color river. I'm taking the excess off on the back of the tissue, because I don't want any fallout. And then what I'm doing is, I'm, now I'm not touching the main lid where I've applied the color. What I'm doing is actually applying like this whatever color I've got on the brush, right on the inner corner there. Just so that I can complete the lid, you know, because currently I've got the color just in this random section in the middle because that's where my finger could reach without kind of like ruining the rest of the lid. So what I'm doing now is kind of filling in the whole lid. 
and you really wanna make sure you don't apply too much product to the brush. Because we've done our base first, we don't wanna ruin anything. So this is where you wanna make sure you go in with just a very small amount. And this is where I feel like a lot of people over compliment com it. A lot of people over complicate it because you don't actually need to go in with so much color on the brush. This is just about filling the areas and getting the right kind of shape first. And at the moment it looks pretty basic because all we've got is kind of that color all over the lid, right? Let's just take this out a little bit there. That's it. So, okay, now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna get another brush I'm gonna get, let's just see what comes to hand here. This is the BK Beauty 203 brush, nothing on this brush. And now what I wanna do is just go into the socket. And all I'm doing is whatever color is already there, I'm just basically kind of like blending it in. So I'm just going back and forth. And what this is doing is it's just making sure that it's grabbing any of the eyeshadow that I've applied and seamlessly blending it into the skin. See what I mean there? So you don't need to apply any products to brushes all the time. Sometimes it's about making life a little bit easier for yourself. Don't keep blending with more product, more product. You've probably already got enough, enough on. You just need a clean brush to pick up the excess and blend whatever's left there. That's nice and blended. Okay. Ooh, okay. Let me just look at a couple of these questions. Um, I will go through and answer some of these at the end. I'm definitely gonna do that. So, okay, this color's nice, isn't it? So now what I'm gonna do is get another shade and this is where I'm gonna get black. Black, right. this is where right. I'm getting super excited about the black. So I'm gonna get a brush. Which brush shall I get? I'm gonna get um let's see what have i got here i don't want something too kind of like yeah, this is a good one is it yeah okay this is the bk beauty 207 brush now i'm going to go into black and i'm going into this one here tattoo which is the black 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 right okay <clears throat> right, let's go into tattoo. Now I've got tissue here because I want to make sure that I do press it into the tissue first because I don't want any fallout. This is a really good way to make sure that you don't get any fallout. Now, where I'm going to apply this black is right here at the end of my lash line, right? So I'm just focusing on applying it right on the upper lash line there. You see that? Don't worry about trying to flick it out or anything. I just want to kind of like get that really nice kind of depth there first. So I feel like I'm getting that there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is kind of like make that a little bit th thicker. Okay. And we're going to take it in towards the center of the lash line. And now we're gonna take off the excess on the back of my tissue. And now whatever's already left there, I'm gonna now drag this out. And I'm pressing very softly. Hopefully you guys can like see that, you know, that you can see that the pressure is very light. And you can see it's slowly fading out. And I, I really want you guys to know, right, that, you know, the, see what I mean? It's nicely fading out. There's still a bit of work we need to do there, right? Now, what I wanted to kind of explain to you when I've done this bit, 
look at the difference. See, see how we've got the shape there, right? We've got this shape going outwards and we didn't really spend that long on that area. Now, what I really want you guys to understand is that when you are doing this, what I've just done, it's, it's so easy with the number of videos that you probably see on YouTube where you watch people and they're like more product and they're just like, I've seen videos before where it's literally, the person is just, and it's great, it might work for some people, but when you don't have much of an understanding of makeup and you are trying to learn and you're trying to educate yourself on the kind of intricate details of application of makeup, such as the blending, such as the pressure, such as the kind of brush that you use, such as how much product you should have on the brush, all these small details that actually added all together can make or break your whole look, that kind of application isn't going to work because what you're doing is seeing something and thinking, let me try that. And then you're doing it and it's just not working. That person knows their face perfectly. So that person, it will work for them, right? They've figured out how much product they need to use, how heavy their pressure is and how strong their pressure is and everything. What I want you guys to understand is there's, there's a lot more to it. Unfortunately, not everyone explains enough when they are applying makeup on these YouTube videos. And that's what I really wanted to kind of make sure that you guys kind of um, understand, you know, that there's a reason I talk so much. <laughs> there's a reason because I really want you guys to actually be the best possible makeup artist for yourself. You know, I, I don't want you to look at things and, and feel like, it's kind of unachievable for you because it really isn't. You guys can honestly create the most beautiful looks on yourself. All it is, is just understanding the, the, the kind of intricate details of it. That's all it is. And, and ultimately, you know how you can actually understand that is by simplifying the whole thing, is by breaking everything down. Okay, so I'm applying this color. What brush do I use? How much do I apply of it? What is my pressure going to be like? Where do I apply it? Do you see what I mean? Like, it's just breaking it down. It's just having, having a question and then breaking that question down into another 10 questions, getting those questions answered, and then therefore you're going to be amazing at it. Ooh, okay, it's very hot in here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so see what I mean? So what I did here is basically I applied it there made a little kind of like ball of color there, made sure I dragged it into the lash line there. And then whatever's left on the brush, I basically kind of like very lightly flicked out, but I'm skimming the skin. Skimming the skin is a big part of getting that really nice faded look, right? Okay, we've still got a little bit that we wanna do, which, I'm gonna go into shortly. Now I just wanna take this into the socket a little bit. So I'm gonna go back into that color, press it into the tissue. And I just wanna add a bit more kind of black there. And go into the socket a little bit. But I'm pressing very lightly. Okay, I'm gonna get a big brush now. I'm gonna get that BK203 brush because there's nothing on there. And this is where I'm gonna do the same thing as I did earlier, whatever's kind of left there. I'm just kind of like dragging it into the right areas. I like how that's fading out, so I'm happy with that. So there is a lot more that we wanna do there, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So same thing, we're applying that little bit of color there. And we are gonna apply some lashes, just cause I think, why not? Gotta make sure it's the same as the other side. Okay, let's clean off this brush so we can actually start blending this now. Lightly drag it out. There you go. 
it's very easy to get kind of like lost in your own blending and then, you know, you just don't talk. <laughs> I feel like I need a, a little bit higher here, just a little bit higher there so that it's symmetrical on the other side. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that now. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to get my Real Technique setting brush and I just, there's not actually anything on here. It's whatever powder was already on here from before. I just want to make sure I just dust off anything that's on my under eye, my lower lower area. Okay, someone's, let me just read a couple of messages. Just need a little two second break, guys. Okay, uh, someone has put, um, you're very thorough. That's why I watch your videos. That's by Iris. Thank you so much. Michelle White, you're one of the best teachers for applying makeup I found on YouTube. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for your much helpful educational videos for telling the theory of makeup. That's by Just Reviewed. And thank you so much, guys. Honestly, it means so much to me. And I did put up a post actually the other day, yesterday, I think, that you know, Allure magazine, they have like this, uh, they had this post up, where, which is basically, you know, if you have a favorite YouTuber, educational beauty basically tag that person on that post and I did kind of say I would really appreciate your support there because I've never really got any kind of recognition like that and it would be really cool but you know it would be amazing if you did it's a post on their feed you'll probably see it it's a bit further down now because it was from yesterday and they post quite a few in a day so thanks so much for those of you who did kind of tag me on that okay let's go Right, I'm gonna now get a smaller brush and I am gonna basically, we're nearly done with this, actually. This brush is, what am I using? Let's see, I'm gonna use my Sigma E21 smudge brush. Okay, so I'm gonna get some, what color shall I get now? I think I've got enough shimmer on. I'm gonna add some more on the lower lash line, but. I'm gonna add uh, a little bit more of another color. Which one shall I go for? Let's go for the shade Nightmare, which kind of looks like a deep, very deep navy. And I'm gonna apply this right here. So what I'm doing is right where the inner corner of my upper lash line is. So, right here from the inner corner of my eye. I'm applying it there and I don't want it to go above my socket area, right? So I really want to kind of create a little, just fill in that area basically. And what I'm doing there, the way I'm applying it is I'm pressing there first and then just pressing it here See that there? I'm pressing it there. And then I'm dragging it. And this is just going to kind of fade the product, fade that color into the rest of the eye. Okay. There you go. We're going to take that up a bit more. Really, really simple little kind of thing that you can do there. And just making sure that the edge of that is not overly kind of harsh. So I'm just kind of like almost pressing over it. I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let me do that on the other eye. Okay. So quick kind of story time for you guys. I used to basically teach makeup when I used to live in the UK. I used to teach like courses, like I used to do these like five day courses for aspiring makeup artists. 
and I used to have like a group of girls in that class and that is basically I kept doing that over and over and over again and then when the girls would finish the five-day course you know some of them would have the opportunity to kind of like shadow me on jobs and stuff so when I used to do more kind of makeup bookings and you know I was kind of like growing my business you know trying to establish myself and everything and I feel like that kind of is what really helped me with the teaching side of it because I feel like I realized that people have such different learning you know a different learning pace you know everyone learns at a different pace and that's why I'm so thorough when it comes to teaching makeup so just you know in case you were wondering why I'm so thorough that's why. Because I want to make sure that however I teach, it doesn't matter who you are, it's easy to understand. Now, what I'm doing here is just going back to the other eye and making sure it is symmetrical to the other side. And just kind of like making sure that they both kind of, yeah, it's a bit can be a bit deceiving sometimes when you've got the screen in front of you it looks different to what's in the mirror okay so that's kind of done that bit now let's do the under eye area because this is where I really want you to see how easy this section is so what I'm going to do is get my BK Beauty 207 brush and I'm going to go into what shade should we go into uh, I'm going to go into that same shade called Nightmare and I'm going to just dust it off on the back of a brush. Someone like, who is that? Someone, someone called Diana Ricards. And I hope I said that right. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Diana. She's done a super thanks. Nina, thank you so much for all of your education I've learned so much from you with underpainting I'm looking forward to your full face of Charlotte Tilbury oh thanks so much Diana that I really appreciate that because things like that really help me to invest back into the channel as well and to give you guys better content and a better setup and a better kind of like just everything at, at a much better quality for you guys because I want everything to be very clear for you the audio to be good you know, all sorts of things. There's a lot more that I'm working on at the moment, which I'm super excited about. So any kind of like help in that sense will be much appreciated. I truly, truly appreciate you guys. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into the lash line. And when you do the lower lash line, what you really want to do, I mean, I'm going to look like scary as hell here, just the faces that I'm going to pull, but you want to focus you should be able to do this without even looking in the mirror. And the reason I say that is you want to get confident and comfortable with touch. You really want to feel comfortable with where the brush, brush is touching. So I know the brush is touching the root of my lower lash. I'm not focusing on getting on the skin. I'm not focusing on getting it anywhere on the lower lash line, or lower like underneath the lash line. I'm focusing purely on the actual root of the lash. And if I make sure I focus on that all the way across, you could do this literally without looking in the mirror. There you go. It's as easy as that, honestly. You don't need to compl complicate it. So same thing here. Focus on the lower root of the lash. But ultimately, the only way this is going to work if you do this is if you make sure that the product that you've applied, you have kind of dusted it off on the back of a tissue, not just tap, tapping doesn't do anything. You wanna make sure that you do kind of like press it once into the back of a tissue. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. I think that's looking good. Ooh, okay, right. Last thing we're going to do here is I'm going to get another brush. I'm going to get, this is a Sigma E30 brush. And uh, no, I'm not going to get that. Uh, am I? No, I'm not going to get that. <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm actually going to get a different brush. I'm going to get, which brush shall I get here? 
Let's get the BK Beauty 201 brush. And I'm going to go into, there's a shade here called Cabin, which is like a chocolatey brown. I'm going to go into that, take off the excess on the back of a tissue. And when I do that, by the way, I just want to show you what I'm doing is I'm going like that. That's how I'm taking off the excess. Not That's not going to do anything. Now I'm going to go right into this socket. It's quite a big brush. You've got to make sure you've got the space to be able to use a brush like this. And all I'm doing is just kind of almost like with this brown, creating like a transition shade so it doesn't look so disconnected. And take off the excess, do the same on the other eye right into the socket. I'm not really focused on like kind of touching anywhere else. There you go, I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's now curl the lashes because I wanna put some lashes on. Okay. Do you, are you ever doing something and then you randomly remember that you need to do something? There's like an email that I need to reply to. Just randomly had that thought. Okay. So next up, what am I going to do? I'm going to apply a mascara. I'll use this one. This is my YSL Lash Clash. Is it Lash Clash? Yeah, Lash Clash Mascara. Let's apply this. And I am going to use some lashes, which I told you. I love how you guys are connecting with one another. I love that. I love that this is such a community. Like, and you know what else I love? Sometimes, I always read the comments, by the way, on videos. They're just, you know, with everything in terms of work that I have going on. I don't always get the chance to respond to every single person. But when I can, I do. And sometimes what I do is I respond to a question via a video because I feel like what better way than to, you know, to answer your question than to actually create a video on it. Um, so, yeah, uh, but what I do really love is I see that sometimes you get, you know, you get random people who decide to watch your video and, Clearly they didn't like it because they leave an awful comment and you're just kind of like, why did you even watch the whole video then? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then I'll see some of you, they'll leave a horrible comment and then you guys are so amazing that you actually respond to them. So I don't even need to do it. You respond to them and you're like, why are you here? Like, why take your negativity somewhere else? And I love that. So um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys. You guys are literally the best. I'm so random. Like I'm, I just, like I'm really bad at accents, right? So bad. Like if you tell me to do one, it will just come out really wrong. It'll just come out like so wrong. But what I do love is how, like how with the American accent, I, I love the American accent. I love the the way you say certain words sounds so much better than when I say it in my British accent. Okay. Mascara on the upper lashes is done. I am going to be using a different one on my lower lashes and I'll explain why in a second. That brush is way too big to use on my lower lashes. So lashes, I'm going to be using my brand's lashes, I've already got them cut ready to apply here because I cut them so that they're a little bit shorter. I don't know who is riding a motorbike outside right now. Um, okay, so get some glue. I've got my Huda glue here. And got a little bit on the back of my hand. Let's apply. I feel like we're all sitting down together. Isn't it weird? Like, I just wish I could see you guys. It would be so cool. 
So I've got like a little, it's like a, the back of a, it's like the stick of a brush that the brush clearly fell off. And I kept it and I use it to put my glue on the lashes. So these are my brand lashes, which we're still working on to get to you guys. Because I know you guys in the US really want these and everywhere else in the world. But I'm applying some glue to the lash band. And these particular lashes that I'm going to be putting on are called Amelia. And I'm putting the glue everywhere. So I put the glue just on. It's kind of not. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it to like kind of focus. There you go. It's kind of just on the strip there. That I've put the glue, right? So now. I'm going to let that dry for a second before I actually apply these. And I get my tweezers in a second. I'm going to apply them. Oh, okay. Is that brow it's still a little bit higher than the other, isn't it? It's just naturally higher than the other than the other brow. Let's read a couple of these while I'm waiting. So we've got Farah has said, I love your smoky eyeshadow. Thanks. Um, oh, that's really sweet. Someone said you should be very proud of your hard work. Thank you so much. Sometimes I get so lost in it that I actually forget how far I've come. It's just because I'm so consumed by everything that I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve and the kind of change that I'm trying to make, you know, and the influence I'm trying to have, the right influence. But thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It's nice to hear it now and again. And I love this look, Nina. I've never used, someone's put, do you recommend magnetic lashes? I tried them, I didn't really like them. Sorry, guys. I just felt like they were gonna come off at some point. Okay, got my lash, right? You'll be able to see more on the other eye because this is a bit kind of hidden. But I just kind of like settle it in above my lash. Let me just, you've got to make sure you clean your tweezers after because otherwise it can just kind of like lift your lashes off. Okay. I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute as well that you're going to love. Okay, let me clean the tweezer. And the reason why is because when you apply one lash, the glue can make the other lash not stick. Let me, oh, sorry, <laughs> just totally covered it there. See how I'm just looking down? And then I just settle it right above the lash. Make sure the root is really sticking onto the lash line. Now the problem is sometimes, like how we've got now, because we haven't actually applied any eyeliner, you can see an obvious difference there, right? I'm gonna show you what we can do. Yeah, I'm going to show you what we can do. So let that stick down. Let that dry before you actually do anything. And right, just put that in the bin. What do I want? I want a, what do I want? Have I got it here? I don't even know if I've got it here. Um. I suppose I could just use eyeshadow, yeah. I can't find an eyeliner pen that I've got here. I would have used an eyeliner pen, but I don't have it here. So I'm going to use eyeshadow instead. So I'm going to use my Sigma E06 brush, which is ultra fine. I'm going to go into the black eyeshadow, right? The black eyeshadow. It's a really fine brush. Very fine. Now what I want to do is I want to actually draw as if I'm drawing eyeliner on my lash line, but only where there's no false lash. So what I'm doing, looking down, very close to the lash line, by the way, it's not like you're not trying to draw an eyeliner effect. You're just going very close to the lash line. 
You can see how I'm applying it there. This is the last section before the lash. This part is important because what we're doing is we're gonna make it look like there's no gap there. See that? See how that doesn't look like there's a gap there now? And you don't need to go over the rest of the lash because obviously that's where the false lash is. Now I'm just gonna quickly get my Royal Technique brush to go over underneath to make sure there's no fallout. We're gonna go into that black again. We're gonna look down, go close to the lash. I just wanna make sure you guys can see. And it's really about making sure that section that doesn't have the false lash is nicely kind of colored in. I feel like that is better. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. I don't know why my seat is super squeaky today. That's really weird. It's like every movement is just making a noise. Okay. We are more or less done with that. I'm just gonna finish off now. Make sure there's no fallout. Okay, a little bit of mascara on my lower lashes and I'm using my Charlotte Tilbury um, push-up pillow talk mascara because it's just perfect for the lower lashes. How are you guys enjoying this so far, guys? And um, are you ready for a little Q and A? Okay. Now we need to sculpt the face. So I'm gonna get my veil brush and I'm gonna be using my one size made for shade bronze and sculpt trio in medium dark trio. That's this here, absolutely love this. This is so good. Now I always take the excess off on the back of my hand because it can be a lot of pigment initially. You don't wanna go straight in. I love this part of any look because I just feel like this is where we're bringing the definition. We're just enhancing it a bit more. Now, quick thing. We obviously did the whole sculpting thing beforehand as well with like underpainting and everything. And that's good because it gives us that very soft focus sculpting, right? Now, you're probably wondering why am I now going over again? The reason being, and the reason I do it now as opposed to doing it before I did my eyes is because I wanna do my eyes. I then wanna see how much, you know, do, am I good with however much sculpting I've already done? Or based on how my eye makeup looks, do I actually need some more? So now that I've done my eye makeup, I can see that actually, you know what? I could do with a bit more sculpting because the eyes, because they're so strong, they've kind of washed out everything else. So you really, this is really about balancing it all up. So if you have done your underpainting and you are happy with it and you then go ahead and do your eye makeup, you might feel that actually what I've already done is perfect for this. It's a soft focus effect. It sits well, it balances out really nicely with the eye makeup look that I've done. But if you've done something like this, because maybe you don't know what kind of eye look you're gonna go for. And then afterwards you look at it and you're like, actually the eyes are so like glam and strong. I feel like I do need to bring a bit more definition back into the face. That's why, we leave it until now to kind of finish that off, right? So now I can see, see how, and we're applying it lightly, by the way, I'm not pressing hard on the face. I always like there to be more product here and it gradually fades in. And I love this color. I just feel like it complements my skin tone well. See, had I have done that before, I feel like it might have felt like it was too much. Now I'm gonna go along here because I wanna just warm up the perimeter of the face. 
I'm happy with that. Well, I feel like I need to go out now. Let's see. How, someone's put, have I tried a peach tone setting powder? No, I haven't. And I will soon. I think I'm I think I'm gonna be receiving some Huda products soon. So I will let you know what I think. Because if I do, then I'll try that out. Okay, I'm just gonna apply a little bit there. Now I've done that, but what I do like to do is just kind of like go over with my powder very lightly just to kind of like almost like kind of blend it all in and this just stops anything from looking harsh okay I feel like I've got a hair or something now. Okay, right. I'm gonna now add a little bit of glow. Oh, I definitely have a hair there. Where is it? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of, not glow, blush, sorry. I'm gonna use my Cheek to Chic by Charlotte Tilbury blush in Pillow Talk. I have a hair somewhere, don't know where it is. Okay. I'm going to use my BK Beauty 108 brush and I'm going to just apply a little bit up here. I just want a bit of color, but not too much. Very subtle. Okay, that's enough. And then I'm going to add a little bit little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of, I swear I can see a bit of, no, I thought I could see hair. Okay, so I'm gonna go in, what's this brush? This is the Zoeva 134 brush, and this is my Georgia, <laughs> oh my God, how bad is that? Did that fall out? Oh no, it didn't. Oh my gosh. I just thought the whole powder fell out and it didn't. It was the brush. I just thought I just cracked a whole load of makeup on the floor. Anyway, this is the Giorgio Armani. This is, what is it? This is the Luminous Silk Highlighter. And it's like that. It's like a kind of like, it's quite warm. I'm gonna use this. And I'm gonna apply this just up here. I can't apply it much lower because I have a lot of texture there and this really enhances it, any kind of highlighter would. So just a little bit up high. Okay, right, now lips. Oh my God, I love this lip combo. I've been dying to share this with you guys. This is an amazing, I've been using this a lot. This is my Anastasia lip liner in Mocha. I'm just gonna make sure there is powder, you know, it's not kind of, it's nice and matte there. Anastasia Lip Pencil in Mocha. I love this. It's almost like a, well, it's actually called a peachy nude. The lipstick, not the lip liner. The lip liner is called Mocha. Okay. 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 
Okay, I'm happy with that. I don't know why I said okay a million times. Okay, so this is now, oh, I did forget to do something. I need to feather this in. Just feather it in, lids. It's a really nice little pencil. Before I put my lipstick on, I'm gonna drink the rest of this. That was like cold chamomile tea. Okay, Anastasia, peachy nude in lip velvet. Oh, lip velvet in peachy nude. Okay, I love this packaging it's like it's very different to usual it's like can you see it it's like I like it I like it so uh I'm not gonna spread it all the way along because I can use my ooh, my lip brush for that I just feel like it's a really nice neutral lip color. That's nice, right? But what I do feel is I could actually make that lip liner darker. Okay, I'm good with that. Let me just get a tissue and blot that. Okay, I'm happy with that. So guys, what do you think? This is the finished look. What are you guys thinking? Do you like this? How are you how are you feeling this? The, this lip combo is one of my favorites at the moment. I genuinely think you guys are gonna love it. Like it honestly is such an amazing lip combo. Just those two together are amazing. And I feel like it's the kind of lip color that would go with anything, like any kind of look. And that's what you want. Sometimes you just want that lip combo that goes with any eye look. And this is what I feel like this is. So just said, I feel like I said that in three different ways but um anyway so first things first the foundation we've had it on a while now it's settled down my natural oils have come through a bit more so it doesn't look so matte do you see what I mean now if you were here from the beginning I mentioned to you that it's matte but it has this kind of lit from within glow right and it's not the highlight because I only applied that right up here like look at the rest of my face do you see what I mean it's matte but it's luminous right? It's, you would never put those two together. So it's just very kind of like a strange kind of finish that it gives you, but it's such a nice finish. It's the kind of finish that I feel like most of us would want. Like you don't want it to be super matte, but equally you want that kind of very little subtle kind of luminosity, but without it being shiny, without it being glowy, without it looking like, oh, she needs to blot her face. Like, I feel like that's what you're getting from this foundation. So I feel like this foundation, I, I mean, it's expensive, right? But it's so amazing. It's such an amazing foundation. So I just feel like, I guess I would go and buy it. <laughs> I guess I would. You know, like I said earlier, my shade is zero. Oh, I'm reading that upside down. It's 35NO. So 35 neutral olive. It's the Louboutin Fluid Foundation. And yeah, I really do hope. I feel like, why does this, why does the camera like, I feel like I'm seeing what you guys are seeing. And you know that thing where you flip your phone and you look completely different and you're like, I didn't know I looked like this. That's how <laughs> this whole live has given me a complex <laughs> because now I'm like, is that, I feel like I'm like heavier on one side. It's really weird. So I'm like trying to like, it's, it's weird anyway. This is just my own stuff I have to deal with. Anyway, 
So let's go through some questions, guys. Oh, I need to stretch because that was hard work. That was stressful. That was stressful. Let me answer some of your questions. Come in, give me the questions. Keep them coming in. Wow. Look at the comments. Okay. So, um, okay. Let me have a look. Let's go right to the top. No. Let's go. Yeah. I don't know if you can go twice. It's the first time I'm doing this, so. But I don't think you can. Anyway, okay. Send your questions in. Whatever you want answered, send them in now because I'm, I'm I'm answering them now. Really excited about this, guys. Okay. Hello from Chicago. Hi. I'm so happy you guys have tuned in to see me. Like, I really wish I could see you too. Mary Kay is like first time on live chat here. Love, this is my first time too. So, you know, this is uh, new for me too. Okay, someone's put, hi Nina, what do you think about spray primers? I don't think I've tried a spray primer, have I? I don't know if I have, but I would guess they would work, right? I mean... I guess they would. It kind of depends on how it smooths the skin. You know, I haven't, I don't think I've tried it. Anyway, I'm just going to go through what I can see. So a, another question is, I think I've answered that one already. Someone said, looks like an hourglass brush. Yes. If you're talking about this one, this is the hourglass veil brush absolutely amazing. Only brush that I actually do use both sides for. I use the big side for dusting powder on my face, right? And then I use the smaller side for the sculpting here. That's what I do there. I've used it for ages now. I absolutely love that brush. It's amazing. It's well worth the money, by the way. And I am going to be putting all the links in my description so you can head on over and get them. So everything for this video. Okay, so someone else has said, um, okay, Laura Mercier setting powder. I'm assuming you meant powder because it just says Laura Mercier setting. What do you think? Um, I do like it, but I do feel like there are better powders around. I fully understand why it's people love it because you don't have to worry about color, right? It's a translucent powder. So like more or less anyone can kind of use it. Although saying that if I'm use, you know, using it on clients and they have like much darker skin tone, I don't necessarily feel like it does work on every skin tone. I do feel like I still stand by this one. I absolutely love this. This is the Makeup Forever setting powder. Absolutely amazing. Has never let me down. Love that. So I do like the Laura Mercier setting powder. I just feel like there are others which are better. I would still use the Laura Mercier setting powder. I still do sometimes though. So, you know, yeah, that's what I think. Okay. Someone's like, lol, I thought you were going out. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm taking this all off after. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, I feel like I should go out right now, but yeah, it's late here. And I am going to be changing the timing, like I said, of the, of the live. So I'm going to be doing it so that it works for me and you guys. I kind of already had committed to this time. So I thought I want to follow through with it. I don't want to change things around for you guys. So I thought I'm still going to do it. But going forward, I am going to be doing it at a different time. But it is still going to be something that you guys can watch. Like, I don't believe that majority of you would be at work or anything during that time. So I will let you know the new timings. And... Let's carry on. I think you should go out now, Lol. You look so gorgeous. Oh, thanks, Laurel. And someone's put, Jess has put, oh my gosh, girl, I want to do my makeup. Now you should do one, one time live and do a follow with me doing your makeup together as collective. And a week before, tell us what to get at the store to do our makeup. That's a pretty good idea. I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can find you now and figure something out. 
Okay, so someone else has put, uh, let's go a bit further down because this is all I think people are agreeing with stuff. I want to buy those lip liners. That lip liner was great, yeah. Do you like regular lip pencils or twist up lip liners? Oh my God, regular lip pencils, definitely. I prefer the old school regular lip pencil because you can sharpen it. These twist up ones are just not sharp enough. They're just not, you're not gonna get that intricate fine line. So that's my opinion on that. What do you think about, hold on, someone's put, okay, when lining your lips, do you line your lips the way they are shaped? And that is from, I think it's Amy, it's A-M-E. I'm not too sure how you pronounce that, but I do and I don't. So what I do is this whole section here, I go on my real lip line, right? I don't go above it at all. Then this bit here, I go, I don't go above it so that it's on my skin. It's still on my lip, but it's on the upper part of my lip, if that makes sense. And the same here. It's just slightly below because I don't also like that look when you can see the lip liner is above your lip, if that makes sense. You're above your lip line. It's just, I think, obvious. So I, I don't want that to be visible. So I go just on the upper part of the lip line. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So uh, what do you think about the hourglass finishing powder? And that is from, it says, Desan. I'm not too sure if that how I pronounce that so sorry I'm not good with the best like the most normal words so bear with me but okay so I don't think that's a great setting powder I'll be honest honest opinion I don't think it's a great setting powder for makeup to last all day that is my honest opinion but I did film another video which is going live soon and that's a full face of Charlotte Tilbury and you're going to be pretty impressed with that so I would watch that so that's coming out soon. Another one is, let's see. By the way, thank you so much to all of you who have put that's gorgeous makeup. Honestly, I love you guys. Someone's put. Okay, Miss Hazel Jade has put, love it. Do you ever do a lip or Cupid's bow highlighter? No, I used to back in the day, but I definitely don't do that now. I just feel like if I did that on myself, it would make my lips look a little bit too big. Like I'm quite happy with how they are. I don't really want them to be any bigger. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do that now on myself. Okay, eyes are looking fire. That's from Just Reviewed. Thanks, girl. Okay. Oh, okay. Rocked this whole life. Oh, thanks. I was so nervous to begin with. I was really nervous. Who was that from? That was from... Oh, my God. Where are these messages going? I'm, like, scrolling, and then they just keep... Oh. Did I just lose a whole load? Where did I go? Or is it just loads of messages loading? Okay, love this look, it fits you. That's by Stella, thank you so much. Alexa has put, do you prefer thick brows on small eyes? I don't think they should be too thick if you have small eyes, because it can kind of like overshadow the eye area and you really, you wanna kind of, you don't wanna take the attention too, too much away from the eyes if you have smaller eyes. Okay, someone has put, oh, <laughs> Miss Hazel Jade who clearly can speak French, because <laughs> I can't. She's put tame, like pain, fetish, the pronunciation of tame fetish. Ah, thanks. Someone's actually letting me know. Tame fetish, but it still sounds wrong coming out of my mouth. Anyway, someone's put, Jess has put, can you do a follow along makeup with me and tell us, with me and a week tell us the tools that you already have so we can follow along with you I think you said something similar earlier again all think about that see what I can do um okay how long have you been a makeup artist that's from Katam's F I'm just reading out the the kind of usernames guys so I don't know if those are your actual names or just usernames oh my gosh years since I was like it's been 
How long has it been? It's been over 20 years. <sighs> been a long time. Okay. Someone said, where in London are you from? I was from South London. Someone has put... Will I put the products and tools you use in the description? Yes, I will. Someone's put, what do you think about mixing foundation and, and moisturizer together? I actually think that's a great idea if you don't want a super heavy foundation. I think it's a great idea, but I would still always still... <sighs> See, I think it's a great idea, but at the same time, I personally like having a barrier underneath, you know? So I feel like my skincare is that barrier between my skin and the makeup. So if you're mixing the foundation with the moisturizer, I feel like there's no barrier there, right? Do you see what I mean? So that's why I think it's fine if you feel like you're going to get a good kind of, you're going to get a better coverage that way. But honestly, I personally feel like it's better to apply your skincare first. So it acts like a barrier and protects your skin. So the other one, yeah, this is all kind of like gradually uh, kind of updating. So I'm kind of losing my place. Hi, Nina. Kisses from Greece. Hi. I've been to Greece. I loved it. Okay. As always, you look, as always, love your look, Nina. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. You're welcome, Iris. And... Where did you teach in London? I had my old, own academy that I used to teach people in. Um, please do for us this look. Looks amazing. Blues. Nina, can you tell me, please, which is the best order for prep before foundation? Please to help disguise wrinkles. I've got a blur primer, but not sure as want dewy skin, but also want to cover my wrinkles. Firstly, you're not going to be able to cover the wrinkles. You're only going to be able to... Uh, kind of help to give a lifting effect, if that makes sense, but you won't be able to cover them. Do you, do you see what I mean? Because it's a depression in the skin. It's not a blemish or a scar that you can cover. So it's not flat. It's kind of folds, right? And because it's folds, you can't cover it. So the, the honestly, the best way is to make sure your skin is highly moisturized underneath. If you're struggling with wrinkles, Make sure it's highly moisturized underneath because the dryness is going to really help to enhance any kind of wrinkles, right? Make sure it's you're, you're hydrated well enough underneath. And then what you want to do is use your blur blurring primer, but you want to make sure you get into the lines and everything, not just over it. Because what happens is when your skin stretches, then you've got a whole load of area in between those wrinkles that you haven't applied anything, right? And that's where product can end up sitting in. So you then want to make sure that you apply your foundation or your concealer, whichever way around you prefer it. That's why I add a mix on here. Even though I prefer underpainting, which means apply your concealer first and then your foundation, I also am well aware that everyone has a different approach and different preference. That's why sometimes you see me applying concealer after and foundation first. It's not because I prefer doing it that way. It's just so that I'm you know, catering to all of you guys out there. I fully get that not everyone is going to underpaint, right? So you can apply it whichever way you want to. I would personally say your concealer first, buff it in with a sponge, make sure you get into the lines and everything, but you also take out the excess after a little while before you set. Then when it gets to setting, rather than pressing the powder in, because that can enhance the lines, you want to get a brush and kind of almost buff it in that way instead. Hopefully that is enough information for you because it's hard to explain it when you're speaking um charlotte tilbury complexion brush when you're switching from blending your highlight to your contour do you use another brush with the exact same one another one i have two brushes here i have one which i use for the lighter shade and one which i use for the darker shade because obviously otherwise we're going to mix everything together and it's going to look weird so that was from miss hazel jade and um, what else? Got a couple of more questions here. Um, I spend more time on brows than anything else. Yeah, welcome to my world. What's the favorite part of your makeup routine? I think that's from Farah. I think it's when I'm sculpting. When I start doing this, I feel like this is what, in my mind, I'm like, 
oh my God, it's all coming together. I'm like, this is it. This is the part that's making me fall in love with this look. It's not even the eyes. It's not even anything else. It's when I've done this bit, that's my favorite part. I don't know why. It's such a basic part of it, but it is my favorite. Okay. Love your looks. Pretty as always. Thank you so much. Wow, Nina, you're amazing as always. Thanks for teaching all of us and want to learn more about makeup. The look is gorgeous, just like you. Thank you so much. Ristina, I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. Someone's put, Nina, if you weren't doing makeup, what would you do? I'd be a baker. Already know. Already got it all planned out. <laughs> I'm going to be a baker. I'd be a baker. I, I just want to feed people. I just, I don't know what it is. Oh, there's another video coming out soon, which you're going to love. So exciting. I'm not too sure what day it's coming out. I can't remember. Might be the next video out. You guys have got to watch it. All I'm going to say is it is super entertaining and informative. You're going to love it. Okay, moving on. Let's get a couple more questions done before we finish this up. Okay. Uh, I love the Huda Beauty setting powder. Have you tried cherry blossom powder? I think I have at the event. I actually quite liked it, but I haven't used it since. Kisses from Portugal. You are my teacher for beauty. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I need new videos are so educational. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Need to jump off here. Thanks, everyone, for a fun time. Oh, guys, I'm going to finish off too now. Um, what's your favorite part of your makeup routine? I already explained that. Okay. Uh, what moisturizer do you recommend for dry skin? I recommend the Omravitzia uh, moisturizer. It's very, very good. They do an amazing night cream that I'm currently using. I don't have dry skin, but I do use it because of the fact that I use retinol. So that can be quite drying. So I use it and it's absolutely amazing. Guys, I've loved this. I've absolutely loved this. I was so nervous to begin with and I was kind of like very you know when you can't breathe properly because you're like you can't take a deep breath it was like that but I have had the most amazing time with you guys I feel like I've sat here and been having like a cup of tea with you with you guys it's been so much fun it's gone on way longer than I thought it was going to go I didn't want to like take up too much of your time but I have enjoyed it thoroughly and I cannot wait for the next one. This is going to be a regular thing, guys. This is going to be, we're going to try and make it a bit more regular. So I will let you know when the next live is going live. And yeah, it's been amazing. I love you all. All the products are going to be listed soon in the description. And I'm so happy you guys came here to support me. I honestly don't know what I would do without you guys with this channel you guys are what makes this channel so special to me because the things that you kind of write into me with and the way that I've heard that it has helped some of you genuinely makes my heart melt. Like it makes me so happy that you guys are here and you just make my day brighter when I read your messages. You make me very happy and I really do hope that my videos bring value to your life in some way and they've made you feel more confident and more comfortable within yourself. And I hope you all know that you are all beautiful no matter what. You are all beautiful inside and out. And I think that you guys are going to be amazing at doing your own makeup. I can't wait to get my hair out now and just get a wet wipe and wipe my face and uh, get to bed and yeah. Love you guys so much. I'm ending it here. Don't forget, if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to leave your comment if you have any more comments. And subscribe to my channel. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'm sending you so much love wherever you are in the world. Good night.